Good morning, Gospel Life Church. This is Andy Hickson here, and I'm going to speaking be uh, reading from 1 Kings 17 this morning. If you want to turn there to follow along, that'd be awesome. Uh, one of my favorite passages in the Old Testament, and uh, a couple things I want to point out just before we start to look for as I'm reading. Um, look for Elijah communing with God, where God speaks to him and he speaks to God, that, that, that relationship that they developed. Um, and then we'll talk about that a little bit afterwards. Uh, verse 1 of 1 Kings 17 begins, Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. Depart from here and turn eastward. And the word of the Lord came to him. Depart from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. And you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the brook of Cherith, that is east of Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And after a while the brook dried up, because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of the flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. And his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him up into the upper chamber where he lodged and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourned by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. Great encouragement of God's provision for sure. And the, the idea that, that Elijah is in a relationship with God that is, is so close that, that he hears God's word speaking to him and he, and he prays to God and God answers him. It sounds really simple, right? Well, yeah, that's the Old Testament, you know, things, things were different back then, right? Of James, another very encouraging verse, in James 5, 17 says that Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed fervently that it might not rain for three years and six months, and it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours. He struggled with loneliness, doubts, um, depression even, we see later on. Um, he was a guy that just... Seemed like a very regular guy. He was bold, sure. Um, he was willing to, to do what God told him to do. And that's really the thing that marks 
his life. God said, hey, I think you should do this. And I just said, like, okay, I'll do it. Um, we have the word of God. We call it the word of God because it's the same word of God that came to Elijah. It is here in our hands. We, we have the word of God and we hear God's word when we're in it and reading it and studying it and meditating on it. So my encouragement is to, to be in God's word and be faithful with that because God will speak to you just as he spoke to Elijah. And then also we need to be praying. Um, this passage in James is, is in the context of, of praying and we need to be praying with faith and confidence that God will answer. Um, but also knowing that God is going to answer according to his will and for his glory. Uh, and that was what, what God was doing in first Kings. It was all for, for his glory and to make his name known, which it, it did in a miraculous way in the following chapter. So just some encouragement from God's word this morning. Um, one of my favorite passages in, uh, prophets in the old Testament and, uh, Hope you guys all have a good day and we're encouraged by this this morning.